Good afternoon, Hillcrest community. We're out here uh, demonstrating a little bit more of our expectations for our course etiquette. And today we're talking about uh, golf cart usage and what the expectations are as far as where we're allowed to drive and some of the signs that we need to follow throughout the golf course. I'm on number six, very pretty hole, short drivable par four. And it's got a couple of little areas that are restricted from cart usage. I'm about 30 feet, maybe 35 feet away from the green. That's the expectation. We don't want any golf carts that aren't authorized maintenance crew or professional staff driving any closer to any green complex than about 30, 35 feet. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, you'll notice over to my left, your right, there's stake and rope over to the right side preventing cart traffic from going around the green in the wrong direction. Over here to my right, your left, we have some directional cart signs that are directing the cart traffic over to the cart path. Every green complex and tee complex has cart paths either leaving the tee box area or coming up to the green area. The expectation is, is that we take our carts to those paths and we walk over taking whatever clubs we need uh, to the green to the next shot that we need to hit. So again, when we come up to the green, we wanna drive our carts over to the side where the path is, that'll direct you to the next hole. And I'll, at this point, we'll take you over to a couple more signs and show you a couple of other reasons why we wanna have cart, carts directed in the right spot. Okay, so we're back here. We made it over to number two and we're on the cart path exiting the T complex. If you notice one other sign that the maintenance crew will put out behind me, it's called scatter scatter for a reason. They want cart traffic to be varied. They don't want cart traffic going down the exact same path. So what the maintenance crew will do is they'll move this scatter sign up and down a cart path exiting the T-complex so that carts will leave. They'll leave that cart path at a different point each time. You can almost kind of see this light sheen on the right side of this path where the majority of traffic has made their way right going into their second shot on number two. If we were to just leave this here, this whole area would then become dead, worn out, very uh, tampered down grass and very inconsistent turf conditions. So we move that scatter sign up and down so that we can kind of uh, equalize the wear pattern throughout the week and the month so that the grass grows very continuous and has really great conditions. We'll make our way up to the green. I wanna show you one other area that uh, can impact the turf conditions with excess cart usage. Okay, so we made our way over here to number two's green area, and we're on the left side. Just wanted to point out, we talked about being 30 feet away from the greens, 30, 35 feet, that's the expectation. Well, this is certainly that gray area where one could argue, I'm far enough away from the green, yet all this traffic, this grass is trampled down because of a consistent wear path or wear pattern of carts going over in this one area. The camera, right now is actually standing on the cart path. So if I walk eight more feet over here to the left, we're on cart path. We just have to walk 10 more feet. The reason why we wanna do that, the turf conditions down here are very thinned out. The grass is really thin, it's exposing some dirt. This has become very trampled down and it's hard. So it's a very firm turf condition, which causes very inconsistent lies and when we expect to be in the rough, we don't want to be there, but when we're there, we expect there to be fluff, kind of a pillow, so the ball's sitting up a little bit. Over here, it's very challenging, and then we have a bunker to hit it over. So what we might also see is the agronomy team throwing out some different stakes, which will help direct that cart traffic over to the cart path, preventing too much traffic going into one area. So a couple things we want to reiterate and remind you. When we're driving carts and exiting cart paths, make sure you follow the scatter signs. When we're coming up to green complexes, let's do our best to keep more than 30 feet away and then try not to drive in the exact same spot as everyone else. Give yourself some leeway, find the cart path as soon as possible. If we all do that, do our part, we'll have the best turf conditions around the greens and uh, we'll continue to have the best course in the area. As far as car paths go on the par threes, if you notice we have four par threes, number four, eight, 13, and 17. All of them have a cart path from T to green. Uh, the expectation with that, with that cart path is that we take our carts and we use the path all the way through to the green. 
and not driving off to the other side onto the grass on those par threes. We always take a couple of clubs with us. Again, these are short holes and we expect the premium turf conditions around the green when we miss, when we don't hit the green with our first shot. So again, on the par threes, let's keep our carts on the paths. If you do happen to hit it over on the other side, take a couple of clubs with you and do your best to keep our turf in the premium condition that it always is. Thanks again. Okay, we got some bonus footage today. New video on etiquette. Uh, we are continuing to see some record rounds this year in 2021. We're over here on number three's tee box. We wanted to talk about uh, when we yell for and being considerate of all the other golfers in our golfing community on the golf course. So a couple of things to consider. We have the houses over here on the right. We have a semi-blind tee shot. So if we were to hit the ball directly over to the right and we're going towards the houses, we want to yell four. We don't know if somebody's outside or not. So we want to be very cautious and practice good etiquette by yelling four that way. If we were to head it over to the left, over back into number two, the hole we just got done playing, whether we know someone there is or not, is there or not, we want to yell four because we're hitting it over into another hole where there could possibly be another player. The other thing and probably the most important is we want to make sure that all the play in front of us is out of the way. So if we have long hitters or there's semi a blind tee shot here, where somebody may have a chance of just sneaking out of the trees and playing in, into, your, into your shot, we want to make sure that they're far enough ahead of us that we don't have to yell four because we can't hit it there. Always practice a little bit of caution wait five more seconds for them to get out of your way. If we hit those errant shots left to right, that happens, let's yell four anyway. Just keep in mind, we're out here with our community of golfers. There's a lot of volume. Every golf course is that way. So um, let's do our best to make sure we're practicing great etiquette. Yell four, give them the heads up, and uh, make sure we're staying safe.